Hey guys, it's your pal John here from Sonic Drive Studio. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel and welcome to another episode of the Reamp Show. Let's dive right in. So for this episode, I received some DI tracks from Yash Makinola and uh, they are pretty cool. Let's take a listen to the raw files that he provided me with. <laughs> He did send in some uh, wave drum tracks as well as a MIDI, so I just loaded in the MIDI with one of my own drum presets. And of course the DI tracks. We have a, a sort of a low bass drop sound here. Let's take a listen. I turned that down quite a bit. Then we have a bass guitar, a programmed bass guitar. and two DI tracks that sound like this and on the other side and another DI track in the middle here just for the beginning of the song now let's take a listen to the track with all the processing that I did let's go Yeah, I'm really digging how this sounds. It sounds huge, it sounds kind of filthy. I was going for a bit more of a dirty sound this time. So yeah, overall, I think it sounds really good. Um, let's just take a look at the processing and let's start with the rhythm guitars. Let's start off with the first guitar here and check out the plugins. Not a whole lot going on. I used Helix Native by Line 6 again. It's such a great platform, you just can't go wrong. And for previous videos, I used amps like the Badonk and I think the Cali 4 Lead, which are two of my favorite amps. But this time I wanted to go with a kind of an older amp model from the first kind of firmware versions of Helix. And I chose the Angle Meteor, which is based on an Angle amp. I'm starting off the chain here with a simple EQ block. And I do this trick a whole lot on guitars because this really allows you to shape the guitar going into the amp. So, for example, if, you're, um, if your guitar sound or your DI tracks have a bit too much bass, you can cut it here with the low gain. So I'm cutting that by 5 decibels. And I'm also boosting the high gain here a little bit, just to create some more high-end sustain and crunch. That's going into the amp block here. And the drive is set to 4.4. Bass is turned down to 4.3, as well as the mids. Treble is set to 6 and the presence is set to 7.8. Now with this amp model, um, it can get quite fizzy if you turn up the treble too much. So be careful with this amp model with the treble. I'd rather use the presence to kind of uh, control the brightness. If you want a more brighter sound, turn up the presence. And like I said, just be careful with the treble here. I didn't change anything other than those settings. So let's move on to the reverb block. I'm using a legacy reverb again and I'm using the room reverb. Now don't be mistaken, the legacy models are still really great and amazing sounding um, effects. In fact, I use these a lot um, because the legacy reverbs have a bit more sort of uh, options tonally. Uh, the room reverb just works very well for creating that really realistic and lively room sound. And I have the DK set to 3.5 and the mix to about 33%. Those settings almost always work. Then let's go to the impulse response. And I've explained this before in other videos. You can load the impulses into Helix Native itself without any problems. But I like to use this free IR loader plugin just because it's a bit easier to kind of browse through your IRs uh, in this manner. So the IRs that I'm using are from the Ohnhammer Uber Duo. It features basically two Bogner Uber cabs. 
And for the left side, I'm using the UBKR V70 speaker option and the Ownhammer One option from the Quick Start folder, as always. And then on the other side, which has the exact same M settings, by the way, I'm using the UBK F V70 speaker option. So they are basically the same speaker option, but in two different cabs. The cabs are obviously quite similar. One is a front loaded Bogner Uber cab and the other is a rear loaded Uber cab. So they have slight tonal differences. I decided to use both cabs on one side just to give them a little bit more of a distinct sound from each other. This really helps to sort of widen the stereo spectrum a little bit. Let's take a listen to these guitars in solo. Like I said before, nice and filthy. Pretty cool. Now I did do some post-processing and it's just some EQ. Um, these guitars were probably tracked with a guitar with very thick strings and probably a baritone scale as well, which gives them a very sort of uh, midi sound. So there are a lot of mids and uh, that does help for the string definition type of thing, but it makes them quite honky. So what I did here is remove some mid information at 308 hertz. And this really helps to open up the mix for the other instruments. I'll demonstrate that in a second. And of course, I added a low cut here as well, just to remove some excess low end, which we don't need because the bass guitar and the kick drum take care of that area and the frequency spectrum. And I also dipped out some upper mid frequencies around 2.2K just because they were kind of uh, getting in the way as well. Now let's bypass the EQ and take a listen. So that's kind of bloated in the low mids and it really has to do with uh, the DI tracks and how the guitar sounds, but that's not a problem at all because we can just add some simple EQ and let's take a listen with the EQ on. So that's much more open and kind of airy and it works a lot better in the mix. So let's try that again in the mix. So first with the EQ bypassed. And then with the equalizer on. So with the equalizer on, it sounds much more modern, it sounds much more open, and there's just way more room and breathing room in the entire mix because of that. And let's take a quick listen to this uh, little dip here in the 2.2k area. Let's, uh, I'll just play the guitar soloed with the EQ on first. And then off. I'm just taking out a little bit. These sort of things tend to happen a little bit more with the older amp models. But still, it sounds really nice. Then for the intro part, uh, there is this kind of lo-fi guitar. I don't know if uh, Josh wanted this to be lo-fi, but I made it lo-fi anyway. It has the exact same amp settings. All that I did here is place an EQ block, a low and high cut block to be exact, after the amp. And I set the low cut to 660 hertz and the high cut to 2.6K. So that's all that I'm doing for this track. It sounds pretty mean, it sounds pretty big, and it sounds pretty filthy. I like it. Let's take one more listen.
Yeah, great stuff. Josh or Yash, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but thank you so much for sending me the DI tracks. If you guys would like to see more of the reamp show, please let me know in the comments and send me some DI tracks for me to work with. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more videos very soon and please hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio at facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.